Hey YouTube, I'm Crystal of CrystalSellsAndStuff.com. Welcome or welcome back to the channel where I share sewing pattern reviews, sewing tips and techniques, and other fun content. Today I'm sharing with you two dress patterns that I sewed up for a quick beach weekend vacation that I took with my family recently. So now let's get into the review. So the first pattern that I wanted to review with you is this McCall's 70. 7562 and this pattern is an older pattern that has also been reintroduced by McCall's with a different pattern number so the new pattern number is McCall's 8164 because when I was looking for patterns to sew up with this fabric um, I was like I remember this pattern and I know I had seen it recently at um, Joann's and so I was like but when I went to just do a Google search on it to see if it was still in print, um, I couldn't find it with McCall 7562. But I kept thinking I remember seeing it recently at Joann's. And so I went on ahead and um, I kept search. I went to the website and looked through all the dresses until I came up with the same pattern, but it was in a different number. So the new number is McCall's 8164. And so if you ever get a sense that you already have a pattern, make sure you go ahead and check it out because I've noticed that McCall's has reintroduced some of their older patterns and just renumbered it and changed some of the graphics a bit up on them so go ahead and double check so and go with your um what you think you know just double check before you go ahead and go and repurchase a pattern because because you probably have it if you get that feeling that you've seen that pattern before because they might have just renumbered the pattern and changed up the picture a little bit on the cover so make sure you double check that before you go ahead and buy a new pattern well anyway this this dress pattern mccall's now 8164 is a really simple dress pattern it's a nice um pull over your head kind of sewing pattern so there aren't a lot of pattern pieces to it and so but there are, are a lot of variations so you can sew this as a a cap sleeve like a um a fold over cap sleeve it's not a separate sleeve piece but it's it kind of folds over it to make um a sleeve so a grown on type sleeve or you can sew it with a cuff sleeve or you can also sew it with a split sleeve with um ties on the bottom for the short sleeve um version i guess it's not short sleeve it comes to like your um your elbow so elbow length kind of just above the elbow length with a tie and split sleeve. So that's another option. So there are a lot of hem length options as well. So you can sew it at, with a straight hem, like in version A, or you can sew it with a curved hem. And then you can also sew it as a maxi um, with a high-low hem. So, and I like the option. And, and you can also sew it with a, a cuff a sleeve, and then you can also color block it on the bottom with um, kind of inseam front pockets in the front. And then view A, which is what I sewed, has inseam pockets. And then you can also put inseam pockets in any other versions. You just have to just play around with it to get the exact version that you want. And view A also has an option to do uh, front pockets. So I really like the options that are available in this pattern. So if you see it, it's a good pattern. I think that you can pick up if you want to have a pattern with a lot of different options to it. So for my version, I decided to sew up view A, which is the kind of just the grown on sleeve without the cuff. And then it has the inseam pockets, but I omitted, I omitted the front pockets. And then I decided to go with the curved hem that they have available on C. So I really like how it turned out um, mixing these two uh, versions together. And so let me tell you about the pattern. So there aren't a lot of pattern pieces. So you just have your front pattern piece, your back pattern piece. Um, there's no separate sleeves. And then you have your pocket pieces. And then you have a neck binding piece right here, as well as a binding, two binding pieces for was well, it's just cut twice. Um, two binding pieces for the neckline opening, and it's all using self fabric. So I like that you can use your own fabric. You don't have to go out and buy a separate bias binding for this, or make your own bias binding. You they just have pattern pieces for those sections. So I do like that about the pattern, and um, and then the bottom also has a hem facing. So I really like the finish of this of the bottom hem. It's a curved hem. You can see that it curves 
um, in the front and then has kind of like a faux side slit, but it's not really a slit. It's just curved. And that is created with the hem facing for the bottom. And I believe, and they just have that for this version C. Version D is just turned under and stitched down, but version C has the hem facing. And I do like this finish for this, um, this pattern, this view. So the pattern is available in sizes, um, like kind of multiple, multiple sizes and a size extra small through double XL. And that is in, available for bust sizes of 29 and a half inches all the way through 48 inches. So a decent size range there, but there's a lot of ease built into the pattern. Uh, and I decided to sew up a size medium, which is for a size 34 36 bus and I do like the sizing on it and I didn't have to make a lot of changes The only change that I made was I took up the hem um, Above where the curve is by about an inch I had to take the seam allowance from the hip area from 5 8 down to 3 8 inches because it was just a little bit snug After um, I sewed it up. It didn't it fit but it wasn't loose like it wasn't a loose fitting dress It was just a little bit too tight um, to get this kind of look and so I just went on ahead and narrowed the seam allowance to 3 8 inch and I like the fit a lot better by narrowing the seam allowance so the fabric that I use is this beautiful Ankara print that my friend T sent me um, as part of the swap it sew it challenge and it has these beautiful flowers on it and white leaves and stems on it and I just love it and she sent this to me as part of the swap it sew it challenge that we did and we did different fabrics for that challenge but she sent this extra fabric to me and so I decided I wanted to go ahead and wear this to the beach because I just like all the bright pretty um the pretty bright flower prints on this dark background so I just love how it turned out in this print and this is a but, and I did pre-wash it. It's a wax print, but once you pre-wash it, it's really um, a really lightweight and flowy kind of lightweight cotton. It's great for the beach, and I just love how it turned out in this print. And I decided to go ahead and make the waist tie because it has an optional waist tie for view D. For view D right here, it has an optional waist tie. And so I just added to make the waist tie. But once I put it on, I didn't like how it kind of broke up the print right here. And so I decided to go ahead and wear it as a headband. So I really like how it turned out in this really pretty print. So I do recommend this pattern. Um, the only tricky parts were maybe were was the neckline. I had to really take my time and really pay a lot of attention to the directions for this just to get it to lie straight and flat and it's pretty flat um but it took me a minute i had to um, pick it a couple times to get it right but i did end up getting it straight and i just like how it turned out and i like the finish on this neckline it's just such a pretty um professional finish to this neckline and i like that you can just throw this dress over your head and just get out the door and put on some cute sandals so this is a perfect pattern for a quick beach trip or any other summer activities that you have to do. So the next pattern that I wanted to share with you is McCall 7946. And this is a really cute pattern. I just love the um, the neckline on this pattern. It's um, one of the most recent learn to sew patterns by McCall's. And it has um, three main, well, four options. Um, view A has just an elastic at the top. It doesn't have any sleeve options. View B has the short sleeves with um, elastic on the bottom. View C has longer sleeves. I think they're more three-quarter sleeves with like a with, with a flouncy kind of cuff. And then the last version is D, and that one has um, shoulder straps. So this has a lot of options on it, and I bought this primarily because I really liked the square neckline. And so I think this is a really good pattern now let me tell you um a little bit more about it so the pattern comes in sizes 4 to 20 for bust sizes of 29 and a half through 42 inches so a really good um pattern range for this pattern and not, there aren't a lot of pattern pieces you just have your front your back you have the optional sleeves or um the the ties or you can do it with no sleeves and just wear it as a strapless dress and then um there's also an option for a bottom flounce on the bottom so i think that's a lot of good options for a learn to sew pattern the fabric that i chose is called baby nawal emerald and that is from melanated fabrics and the fabrication is 92 percent viscose and eight percent linen and it is really 
nice and lightweight. And I just love um, the flowiness of it. And I just love this beautiful, beautiful emerald green color. It's just such a statement kind of color. And it's just nice and bright and perfect for anything that you wanted to sew in the summer. And I think it would even look good as a fall option because the emerald is a jewel tone and I think it would look good to go ahead into fall. So I really like it and it's nice and lightweight and breathable. So it's perfect for the beach um, or any, and it's also good for any kind of like a shirt or a top. I think this would look really cute in those kind of um, garments. Another thing that I like about this fabric is that it's pretty stain resistant because when I, when I went to take some pictures on the bar, boardwalk on the, one of the benches with the kids, I sat in somebody's tuna fish um, while I was taking the pictures and I was able to get the stain out. So I'm glad I was able to do that. So I'm glad this fabric was pretty stain resistant. And I didn't get twirls with it on the beach um, on the boardwalk just because of that little stain. So I, I did take some pictures out here on the deck at home. So the only hang up about this pattern is there are, it's not a difficult pattern per se, but it does take a bit of time just because there's a lot of bias binding involved. So you have bias binding, you have two rows, you have three rows, I'm sorry, of bias binding um, that you have to stitch on to create casings for the elastic for the waistline. So you need um, quite a bit of a uh, bias binding to go ahead and create those casings for these three channels. And then there's also casing for the shoulder sleeves right here and then there's casing also for the front binding i had i mean it it calls for so much bias binding that i ran out i was using white i used white binding for the three um sections for the waist and then for the shoulders but i ran out and so i used some light green bias binding to make the casing for the um the the top of the dress in order to get that to go all the way around the dress so when they say what you need for the bias binding, they really do mean it. And it calls for um, seven yards of elastic, and that's three-eighths inch elastic, and then nine yards of bias binding. And so I suggest you go ahead and get that so you, in case, so you won't run out. Because I thought I just had enough, you know, because I knew I had quite a bit of white bias binding. But I ran out of that pretty quickly, and then I had to go ahead and use it. Use some green that I had um, for the front front and back bodice pieces and then as far as difficulty um the pattern wasn't a difficult so like i said the only problem that i had was the directions for the sleeves so part of the pattern tells you to um to reinforce the sleeves the top of the sleeves and it, it's like a l you stitch in the l like position for that that's for where you attach the sleeves and so i did that and then they have you snip into Diagonally, diagonally into that dot. And then they have you attach the sleeves after you construct the whole sleeve. And then, so I did that. And then in the picture they have, it looks like it's sewn flat around. You attach it right here on the underarm by the seams um, of the front and back pieces. You attach the sleeve, you attach the sleeve on the sleeve seam there, but they said in the picture, it looks like you just do it flat, but it doesn't take into account that little slit that you did because when I attached it, I just kept getting a hole. I had to keep, un I had to keep unpicking it because every time I sewed it, I was getting a hole. I was getting a hole and it was just driving me nuts. And I was up to like two o'clock in the morning because I knew we were leaving town. And I definitely wanted to get this dress completed before we headed out of town because I knew I wanted to take pictures of it on the beach and so i was just getting so frustrated <laughs> with the sleeves and i finally figured out that i had to put where the slit is where they have you cut into the slit to the dot i had to put it right up against the top of uh, bodice of the dress in order for it not to show and that way you can go ahead and stitch your seam allowance and then the the sl the snip would be closed up so i hope that makes sense but um that was the only issue that i had with this pattern otherwise it's a really really easy pattern but that was driving me 
so nuts. So let me know if you've ever had something that seemed like a really super simple pattern go awry <laughs> at the end, just over some simple directions or a lack of clarification in a pattern. So I think that is the only thing that takes this to a level two for this pattern because just they just don't really explain where you when you snip in snip that sleeve how you're supposed to attach it and then not have the little end up with a hole where it attaches to your um to your dress and so that just it drive it drove me nuts so let me know if you've had that kind of that issue come up right something looks super super easy and you know you have the skills to do it but when you get to the, a certain point it just doesn't make sense and so anyway let me know that let me know i'm not alone <laughs> but anyway i'm glad i figured it out and i'm loving how it turned out i had so much fun wearing this dress it's just so nice and airy and flowy and i would would sew it again now that i know how to do that but it drove me nuts and i was just like i was ready to throw it out <laughs> I was ready to just throw it under something, but I was like, no. And I even thought about not adding the sleeves, but I said, I done I've taken so much time on these sleeves, adding bias binding, and I even understitched the bias binding. I just took my time making these sleeves, and I was determined to get these sleeves to work, especially because that is the whole reason why I picked this pattern up, because I just like the squarish neckline look of the, um, of the pattern. So... Anyway, I'm glad it all worked out. And um, anyway, I'm happy with both of the dresses that I made um, for my little beach trip. So anyway, here are some quick pics and twirls of me wearing these two fun dresses. So those are the reviews and the twirls of this pad. I do like how these both turned out, even though I had a little bit of te technical difficulties. I'm glad I was able to work them out. So anyway, let me know what you think about these dresses. And if you've tried them, let me know in the comment section. I'd love to know how you got along with these two pieces. I hope you all are doing well and enjoying the last days of summer. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so you won't miss any future videos. All right, until next time, take care. Bye.